Hey everybody, uh, Josh Walters here. Welcome to another episode of the Milwaukee Beer Review. I'm also here with my buddy Ross. Hey everyone. <laughs> Hi. Get that differently. <laughs> hey, it's a new intro. We're starting things a little bit fresh today. A little bit of a new spin on things. You might have heard our new intro music as well. Yep. Super exciting. Um, glad to have that aboard. Thanks Ryan for putting yeah. that together for us. Um, so today we've got a new brewery in the state of Wisconsin. This is not a Milwaukee brewery, but a lot of their stuff is available here. A little brewery called The Brewing Project out yeah. of Eau Claire, Wisconsin. So uh, our buddy Lau lives there. You yeah. want to give him a little shout out? Hey, so Lau and I, Lau actually took me there when they had their original location back in 2013. It was a small space and they just really put up like a couple like patio chairs and everything in their t- brewery. And I don't remember exactly what beer I had. I was like, I'll try this, this stout, whatever. And it was amazing. I thought it was so good. I'm like, this is such a great brew. I would love to see this stuff you know, like in the Milwaukee area. And it slowly but surely kind of started to get itself in this area. You're seeing it more and more at the liquor stores and at some brewery or bars and everything. Um, so it was originally located at um, off North Oxford Street in downtown Eau Claire, but quickly grew up. Oh, sorry. It's outgrew its original location and moved to the Oxford location, which is right across the street from the previous location. Um, it, it, honestly, it's they got a really good variety of beers, and it's definitely one where if you see it out there, definitely try to grab anything you can from them. Yeah, so it's kind of a crazy story I read on, on their page. Essentially, they, they started off, they ran into some legal issues with... You know, obtaining you know contractual yeah. agreements, uh, you know, to become a legal brewery and be able to serve, and um, but they ended up pulling through, and, and here we are reviewing some beer. Yep. So excited to check them out. We got a couple milkshake IPAs today, which is pretty cool. It's a different uh, different beer that we've done so far, so I'm yep. pretty excited for. We have their Creamsicle Resist, and we have their Passion Fruit Resist. Yep. Um, so we're gonna start off with the Creamsicle Resist. So this is a 6.59, very specific ABV. <laughs> very specific. Um, it's a IPA with Milk sugar, citra, mosaic hops, uh, mandarin, orange, and vanilla flavors. I'm a huge creamsicle fan. I love oh, yeah. orange and citrus and all that kind of stuff in my IPAs. So this will be this will be interesting. Yep. And milkshake IPAs are something Brewing Project's known for. So mm-hmm. let's get this thing in the glass and dive in. Well, creamsicle milkshake IPA for the day. Ross's pouring technique has improved. I'm getting better. Nice, nice carbonation on it. A um, little more transparent than I was expecting. I expected to be a little bit more, kind of not so much darker color, but a little less transparent. But nice big bubbles in the the carbonation. That nice looks good. Fluffy white head. All right, let's get a little nose on this thing. Oh yeah. Oh. Right off the bat, it's just orange. Lots of orange. Um, not overpowering, but it's, it's very good and very forward. Yeah. Uh, that sourness to, to citrus that you're definitely going to get on it, you get that right on the nose. Mm-hmm. You know, a little creaminess, but it's, just, it's more citrusy, more orange, everything up front. A little bit of uh, bitterness uh, from the hop character coming through. You can definitely tell citra hops are involved in this equation. Citra is probably one of my favorite... IPA hops for pale ales. I didn't even say citra. I think I only mentioned the mosaic hops. So it does have citra hops as well. My mistake. Smells fantastic. Yeah. A little bit of creaminess in there too, mm-hmm. like you get, you know, from uh, you know, from that creamsicle style. Mm-hmm. Let's give us give this thing a shot. All right, cheers, buddy. All right, cheers. It's so like. It's so smooth. Yeah. Like, on the front, you get the citrus, you get the orange flavor right on the front of the beer. Very much like what you get on the nose. On the back end of the beer, for me, it's, you get that cream, the the creamsicle, kind of that, like, creamy, sweet um, flavor off the end, of the back end of the beer. It's, it's really, really solid. Definitely reminds you of those old creamsicle yeah. popsicles back in the day. I was hoping the, the milk sugar and everything would be a little more forward, but... It's subtle, which is good, because it doesn't overtake anything. It really allows the orange and the citra hops and everything just to take over throughout, which is very good. Um, it's orange all the way through, a little bit of creaminess towards the end, but it's mainly just that orange flavor up front, and you get a lot of it in the back end. Um, very good, very smooth, like you said. Yeah, just very... I mean, it, it's it's solid all the way through the beer. I mean, nothing that I wouldn't expect in a beer like mm-hmm. this. Like, the only thing that's a little bit odd to me is there's like the, the carbonation on this just feels light and i don't know if it's the style but uh the carbonation just feels really really light like almost like 
there's just a subtle carbonation to it. Like, I don't get a ton of carbonation on this, on the mouthfeel. It could be the milk sugar. I don't know mm-hmm. enough about the brewing process or the science behind all of it. I'm, I'm going to guess that's probably the milk sugar. It's right there. there. I mean, you can yeah. see it through the glass, right? Yeah. I mean, it is there. Yeah. Oh, it's a very tasty beer. So... This is like a this is like a perfect spring beer, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. perfect for this time of year. Yeah. You're sitting outside on the deck. It's 60 degrees yeah. out. Um, you know, something that's a little bit heavier, but not crazy. This yeah. is this is good. I would probably put this untapped around a three seven five. I really really like it. Um, I would drink this no problem. Um, and this is up my alley, right? For mm-hmm. for an IPA, so. About three seven five. That's where I put. It. I got pretty close. I'm gonna put about three five. Uh, very good. Everything you said is accurate. The only thing I, I just wish it had a little more punch is with that milk sugar. Uh, a little more of that creamy taste is yeah. the only thing I was hoping for a little bit more. But very good. Very solid beer. Um, definitely something I would drink many of and yeah. order at the bar. So yeah, good stuff. All right. <clears throat> so what we got up next is uh, the passion fruit resist. So same style. This is another milkshake IPA. This one bumps up the ABV just a little bit, about a half a percent. So this one's actually listed on the can at 7% ABV. So a little bit higher. Again, same hop components in this, Citra and Mosaic hops. Um, but this was brewed with passion fruit. And it was something I can't remember I anymore. Forgot. It was like the Pensacola fruit of Florida. I don't know. There's a flower. It it's a flower. There's a flower involved in it and fruit. Really glad we looked it up. Before yeah, we show. looked That's it up. That's awesome. It's fantastic. <laughs> really awesome. Um, but so this is passion fruit. So if you know what passion fruit is and you're into that, um, you know, check this out. We'll see how we feel about passion fruit yeah. after we try it in a milkshake <laughs> IPA for the first time. So let's get this thing in the glass and uh, we'll see how it is. Yeah. Alright, so we'll get this one open. So very similar color uh, to the previous one. Similar carbonation, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. Not gonna lie, I kind of thought this was gonna be purple. I think the can threw me off. The can does throw you <laughs> off. I wasn't sure what we would expect either no. because we learned in the break that the flower is not from Pensacola. So a Pensaflora. Passiflora. Passiflora. Damn it, darn it. All right. Good looking beer. Yeah. All righty. Let's get a little nose on the passion fruit. So definitely a completely different nose yeah. than what we got on the creamsicle. I have no idea what passion fruit smells like. I was just about to say the like. same thing. I don't know. What, <laughs> so I don't know what to expect. What I'm actually getting out of this more from the creamsicle, I'm getting a little more of a hop note. I'm getting much more hops coming through on this one. Unless passion yeah. fruit smells like hops. A little bit more character. <laughs> a little bit more hop character on this. Like I almost get like I don't know if it's the purple that's screwing with my head from the can, <laughs> but like I'm almost getting like almost like a grape, a little bit of a grape note on the nose. I'm getting mainly hops, actually. I mean not not strong and not like overpowering, just a nice subtle hoppy smell to it. There's, I mean, there's fruit there. There's like fruit sweetness that's coming off the nose. I just can't identify the fruit. Yeah. Quite frankly, I think that's what it is. And the purple's throwing me off. Let, let's try <laughs> let's this thing. Try All right. Ooh. That's really good. That's tasty. That's more of actually that creaminess is more of expecting with the creamsicle. Yeah, I think you've got the milk sugar coming through mm-hmm. on this one a little bit more. Maybe that's because... The citrus just kind of overpowers the milk sugar, whereas the passion fruit, whatever that is, um, just doesn't have as much of a powerful component. Isn't as much of a powerful powerful component to this beer. And what's nice is like up front you do get whatever the whatever passion fruit tastes like. That's what we're getting up front. You, you get a little citrusy, a little bit of a fruity kind of taste, but then you get the cream and then it's nice bitterness right at the end too. Yeah. Which is really makes this like a full body beer. I literally right? got it as you were saying yeah. that, so it was like you were like dictating to me what I was tasting. So that was good. This is solid. This is I, really good. I actually really like this. I like this more. I thought I would like the cream sickle more. Completely agree. Um, but this is actually really good. So if I'm looking at this one and I'm tapped, um, and I have the cream sickle about three five. I'm gonna put this about four two five. I really like this. This is good. This is it's got that really good. Um, milkshake IPA components to it you get mm-hmm. and that hoppiness that you get on the back end really ties this one together like it really just makes a full body beer and it just it cuts through some of that creaminess gives you that better taste that you get in IPAs this is 
fantastic. I feel like maybe I would appreciate this more if I had more familiarity with passion fruit. There. I I I do want to give this a little bit of a level up on the creamsicle, so I'm going to come just south of you on this one in and around a four. Okay. Um, so I'm at a 375 and a 4 on these two. You were at a 3.5 three, five, and a 4.25. Four, four, five. Five. Yeah. So not that far <clears> off, but <throat> yeah. really solid. I mean, mm-hmm. I love the milkshake IPA style. I mean, I love my traditional beers too, but this is one of those just easy drinking type beers, yeah. and every single one of them tends to yeah. be unique. So yeah, um, really good stuff here from Brewing Project. Glad we got to try a few things mm-hmm. from them. Another beer series that I really love from them is the Cow Cow. Mm-hmm. So I've had a lot of those. Actually, I've had several of them yeah. over the course of the winter stout season. Um, hoping to get those on the channel here at some yeah. point in the future, too. But uh, really great stuff here from Brewing Project. Nice work on the Milkshake IPAs. Great stuff. Um, glad to get you on the channel. Yeah. So um, if you like what you're seeing, uh, you know, go out find us on the rest of our social media pages. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, If you found us here on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the little subscribe icon. Um, We'll get you notifications every time we release new videos. We're releasing stuff weekly, um, pretty much focused on Wisconsin breweries at this point, but we're going to be kind of floating outside of that area as well as um, new stuff arrives and as we try some new stuff from the seller. So um, keep in touch. Let us know what you think. Um, Let us know in the comments what you think about these beers if you've tried them. Um, Outside of that, Uh, We'll see you on the next show. Uh, See you on the flip side, and we'll see you soon. Have a good one. Take it easy. That'll be fun. Let's try to say that. Plasso. Wait, am I doing passion fruit or are you doing passion fruit? Um, I'll do passion fruit. Okay, I'll give it a good skill. <laughs> <laughs> Ross is gonna say anal instead. It's fine. It's from the anal fruit. Anal fruit. <laughs> it's from the anal fruit of the Passiflora times. <laughs>